Hello, and welcome to Toronto, or as the locals say, Toronto. This was my first time flying to the US from Canada, and there was a lot to take in. First of all, there was a separate area for flights to America, and it was crazy busy. Check-in wasn't too bad, but the line heading to security and immigration was immense. I cannot stress enough just how much time the priority lane saved me. I didn't film it, because obviously I didn't want to film three to 400 people and then just walk past them, but as a rough guesstimate, I reckon I saved at least half an hour of waiting in line. I made it through and went to the main Air Canada lounge for some breakfast. My sausage and egg muffin was actually really satisfying, but the lounge was absolutely packed. Literally full, up to the point where people were standing and eating their food, waiting for a seat to free up. I decided to head to the gate and found another mini lounge closer to the departure gates. The other cool thing that was new for me was clearing US immigration before arrival, meaning I arrived into Austin and just walked out of the terminal like a domestic passenger. Here's my plane for today's flight. A Boeing 737 MAX 8. This was my first time flying a MAX and I was, um, excited. The Air Canada 737 has four rows of business class in a 2-2 layout. The seats are a normal recliner type design with a pop-out leg rest and around 38 inches of pitch. It's basically your average Australian business class or American first class, or similar to an international premium economy. I chose seat 4A in the last row, and although the wall seemed awfully close behind my seat, there was still ample recline. Interestingly, there weren't any amenities at the seat, like a pillow or blanket. I wasn't expecting them, but I thought that for a 3-4 to four hour international business class flight on a premium airline, they could have at least had a pillow or something. The sun finally revealed itself and I had a look at the breakfast menu. We soon completed boarding and pushed back to commence our journey to Austin. This was a morning flight, and I didn't really feel like watching anything on the IFE. But from a quick scroll, there seemed to be enough on there, and the system itself was easy to use, with a nice and responsive touchscreen. I flipped open my table and got ready for breakfast. I went for the French toast, which came with a side of fruit and yoghurt, but no tablecloth. Soggy, sweet and syrupy sums it up. I was impressed with the speed of the service. Breakfast was all done and dusted within an hour of taking off, which left me plenty of time to rest after my early start. This is what the seat looks like when reclined. It's a bit hard to tell from this perspective, but the seat does go back. The leg rest also pops out and helps support your calves. I basically napped for the rest of the flight until we started our approach into Austin. So, what did I think of Air Canada's business class? Well, it's pretty much what you'd expect for a short haul flight. Some kind of hot meal and a comfy chair for three and a half hours. You could easily do this flight in economy, but there's a good reason I didn't. This is my opinion, and I understand that everyone's situation is different, so my approach may not be the best option for everyone. But to me, it's all about the add-ons and overall value proposition. We'll put status aside, as that can affect things. But generally speaking, I need to have at least one check bag and seat selection. This means I need to look at a mid-tier economy fare and can't make do with the most restrictive basic fares. Depending on the date and time, the price difference between economy and business, or US first, can actually be pretty minimal. In my case, it was about 150-ish Aussie dollars, and in my opinion, it was absolutely worth it. For that difference, you get a much nicer seat, a meal, more luggage allowance, priority perks, and you earn more mileage from the flight. The mid-tier economy fares don't necessarily get you 100% mileage, so you need to check what fare class you book. In business, you're pretty much guaranteed 100%, and it's most often 125% or more of the flown miles depending on your preferred program. So yeah, this may not look like the most glamorous flight or best business class product out there, but for this flight, it was definitely the best option for me.